So on page 64, George, you've got a quote, um, and it's under the section, Questions to Empower You. And it's, to lead an extraordinary life, do the everyday common things in a way that is not common to others. Mm. So that really resonated with me because yeah. most of us have to do the same things every day. Yeah. But, you know, the difference in people that lead really extra, extraordinary lives is, yeah. is what they do with that same time that everyone has. So where did that originate? Feel like, How did that come into mm. your consciousness? Um, I... You know, I was probably blessed in many ways in that, you know, there's some patterns around thinking and, and self, you know, hu my own performance embedded into me by my dad. You know, because um, he, he always had, you know, these philosophies around, you know, your word is your bond. And I tell people that you don't need a contract with me. If I yeah. say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Yeah. You know, and there were other patterns. But w one of them is, you know, always trying your best you know, give it 100% because the only failure is that you, you know, you don't give it 100%. Yeah. It's not it's not a failure to be beaten, it's a failure to not have tried yeah. kind of thing. This particular concept has just emerged, I think it stemmed from that. And, you know, I, in fact, it prompts, uh, it reminds me back of a particular story that I still use, and uh, I know I've written about it somewhere, and that was, we did a, it was one of the last jobs I did when, you know, I was part of a special operations group, and we'd spent months looking for a criminal activity, you know, in some uh, really dense bush area. And like, seriously, it was months. Yeah. We, we'd even got to the point where the information which had come from a government organization, might've been ASIO or something, had been plotted on a map, but they'd plotted it in reverse, upside down. It, 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 it was from a satellite shot yeah. photo. <laughs> and they'd taken the satellite imagery transposed it onto a map but they got it upside down so mm. they probably plotted the negative of it and we went and did i remember a one week walk and and we walked between 50 and 100 kilometers with mm. packs on looking for this location and we were hundreds of kilometers away because it was actually reversed we didn't know that till the very end of course yeah. so you know this particular search for this location went on for months and we would go in one week two weeks at a time and then rotate with teams well when we finally got to the conclusion of this, which is three or four months or whatever into the time, uh, we just happened to be the team that was doing the, the stint. So in there, we would walk in uh, around about 10 kilometers, we get dropped off at two in the morning, 10 kilometer walk into you know our, our main point of activity. And we would carry, and I, I remember the team that I went in with last time, four of us carried 240 kilos of gear. So 60 kilos each we had to carry. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. That's a person. <laughs> yeah, like, and I'm talking, we're talking, you know, a 10 hour, 10 kilometre hike and mm -hmm. walking at a rate of about two to three kilometres mm -hmm. an hour. So really working hard to get yeah. there. So a lot of effort gone into it. We're stationary, we're concealed, we're, you know, living like mongrel dogs, you know, eating out of packs and uh, everything we, water and food, we all carry it. We carried it in for the entire period. This yeah. is what made things so heavy. And... We got a little clue, you know, someone rode in on a motorbike and uh, was the first activity we'd seen in like three months, Yeah. aside from a helicopter. And so, um, uh, I think it was three of us, we left one person behind as a lookout, and three of us tracked that motorcycle. Mm -hmm. So we followed it, and I don't know how long it was, it might have been eight hours into it, you know, we're tracking just a little sign in a bush following a person who's trying to conceal their sign <laughs> that was the problem yeah right? that's tough yeah and and mm -hmm. but we eventually found the motorcycle you know hours into mm -hmm. the walk and then then we're looking for footprints now and, and foot sign mm -hmm. so we would do circles and circle out find yeah. sign follow it lose it do circles yeah follow it lose it, you know so it went on and on and on and it might have been eight hours into it and I remember sitting down in a little creek bed and it was exhausting, you know, carrying a, a lot, a, not a heavy pack, but a pack mm -hmm. in case we get stuck out there and weapons and everything. And uh, one of the guys, you know, was really dejected and wanted to give up on it. And, and I remember that thinking at the time that the only way to change our feeling and response to this whole thing is to change how we're thinking about this. Yeah. So I just posed some questions straight away, which kind of flipped them. And, you know, one of them was... You know, statement slash question, you know, I go, you know, th think about how difficult this actually is. Imagine the story we've got to tell when we solve it. Yeah. You know, and it, and it 
tapped into the values of the people in that group. Yep. You know, we like to tell these stories and big note ourselves. <laughs> and and but it also got us thinking about the the story, not the action, action. and activity that was mm. you know really um, you know taking time. So from that kind of stand, if you want uncommon outcomes, you better start thinking about uncommon ways of thinking. Yeah. You know, don't be reactive. So sitting in the creek complaining about the event is reactive. Mm. Proactive you know, is uncommon yeah. in most cases. And a lot of people would have turned around and gone, no way, yeah. enough's enough, I'm out of here, yeah. you know. Yeah, we solved it. Yeah, We solved it and we get so much kudos out of this. Mm. We got an uncommon result that most people have given up on, Yeah, you know, and the, the superintendent who was running the operation stuck with us. Because I remember Bob Atkinson actually, who yeah. ended up being commissioner, mm-hmm. he asked, he said, do you think you can solve this? Yeah. And I said, I believe we can give give us two more weeks, and yeah. that's where the last two weeks came from. Yeah. So, you know, fifty percent of the population statistically are going to have below average lives. Mm. If you want to be in that, you know, the upper fifty percent, then then you can't think in a common way. You can't think like the average person. And and for me, um, average thinking is reacting to circumstances without you know conscious awareness of how you're reacting. Yeah. Uncommon thinking is is being self conscious and changing the way that you think about circumstances and events and whatever it is. Mm-hmm.